Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today, they announced yesterday that the Lost Belt 7 Road to Seven... <laughs> Man, this, na this name always gets me every single time. The Road to Seven, there's not even a The Road to Seven Lost Belt Number 4 campaign was announced yesterday, so I'm going to be going over it today. Why the delay? So, they're going to be adding some new interludes. <laughs> One will feature Arjuna Alter, and the other will feature Janako over here. Arjuna obviously doesn't need a buff, so they didn't give him a buff, but instead you get two St. Quartz for finishing it. And Janako did need a buff, so she gets a buff on to her one of her active skills. We'll look at that a little bit later. Um, to unlock the conditions for these interludes, you have to have cleared Lost Belt 4, reached their third ascension, and get their bond level to 3. And like every single one of these Road to 7 campaigns, um, some of the interludes are going to be opened up a little bit. This is really good if you don't have any of the units mentioned, because it means you get some free sync quartz and you get to do story that would normally be locked off for you. I would suggest doing it, um, if only for the sync quartz, but for the story stuff, it's usually pretty good. Like, um, uh, the ones that always come to my mind are always Arjuna and, uh... Arjuna has a really good one. Shudan has a really good one. And they usually have stuff that is like hinting towards future events as well. Um, yeah, really good stuff. But anyway, I'm just now <laughs> diverging into talking about interludes. The interludes that will be unlocked will be for Karna, Arjuna Alter, Janako, uh, Rama, Lakshimbai, uh, Azvataman. Apologies again for my pronunciation on these names. Neza, if you know the right way of saying them, feel free to tell me. <laughs> William Tell, except for Asclapius. This is the way I choose to say his name. I know it's wrong. Um, and to unlock these interludes, you have to have cleared, no cleared Orleans, clear Lost Belt 4, clear Lost Boat 4, clear the singularity where you fight America, e pluribus enum, you don't fight America, you fight Maeve, who has taken over America, uh, clear Fuyuki, clear Atlantis, clear Solomon, clear Fuyuki, and clear the Lost Belt 3 intro. Um, and there'll be a limited time campaign, which will feature two friend points, two XP earned, plus two X great super and uh, great and super suck chance for the following servants, all the ones mentioned above for Lost Belt 7, and then one half AP for rank up quests, which will be for Rama, Lakshimbai, uh, Karna, and Neza. And one half AP, where one half AP for all of the Lost Belt 4 free quests. Um, and the half AP for free quest only applies to the first three times the free quest is cleared. Uh, on the fourth time onward, the AP cost will be the regular amount. So keep that in mind. Um, there will be two rank up quests. One for Lakshimbai and another one for Neza. Which will be two strengthenings here. Which should help a little bit because I believe both of them are a little bit on the weaker side. And hopefully this makes them just slightly better. Uh, the Mana Prism Shop update. And if it doesn't, I guess that's another free St. Quartz. <laughs> And the mana shop, uh, the mana prism shop update will add the one who bear the one who no the one bearing fortune, uh, which is when engraved on a quick card, critical damage up 10% when attacking using the engraved card. And you can see here him with uh, Ganesha, the elephant god, the mysterious elephant god, right there, very adorable thing. Limited time master missions will be available as well, which is just clear three lost belt four free quests, and you can get. Five teapots, one of each uh, code opener, and then 200 mana prisms. On the recollection quest, similar to the other ones, you have to have beaten Lost Belt 4, and then you get access to these. If you are currently going through Lost Belt 4 and you just beat them, congratulations, you get to do them again. Uh, but the first one that unlocks is uh, after you beat uh, Lost Belt 4, and it's called Section 10 Arrow 2 Recollection Quest. Once you beat this one, you unlock the other two recollection quests that give you the tickets, and then you beat those. And if you want to do any of the super recollection quests, and you have to have cleared um, certain conditions, like this one is clear section 9, arrow 3 recollection quest, you beat that one, and then it'll... Hmm, section 9. I feel like it would be section 19 is what they mean, but maybe, I don't know. That's, that's weird. Section 10... I'm not going to think about it too much. Point is, you unlock them by just doing them. If you do these three, it should unlock the other ones. And they're also just side ones because they're only here for slightly more challenging times. Um, only if you want a more challenging version of the fight. And I guess it makes sense because all the story fights, you basically fight a single time. And then you never have to worry about them again. Unless they decide to do some funky campaign with them somewhere down the line. 
So this is your way of getting your chance in to fight some dudes again if that is what you're interested in. Summoning campaign. Here's the big meat and potatoes of it all. The summoning campaign related to it, which will feature Karna, Arjuna Altar, Janako, Lakshimbai, Rama, Isvataman, Neza, William Tell, and Asclapius. With the schedule looking a little bit like this, with um, Rama, uh, Lakshimbai, and Neza, and Isvataman always being in every single one of these banners. And obviously the same is true for the three stars. I'm going to go over the... Th I'm, in detail, I'll go over the five stars. But in terms of the other ones, uh, I'll just give a very quick, hey, let me talk about him. Asclepius, um, I think is always is good now on NA already. He's also story locked, so it's kind of a pain in the ass. If you're a big fan of Asclepius, this is your time to get more medals for him or to get uh, NP up for him. Um, it can be, it really is a huge pain in the ass to get it for three star story lock. They are the most annoying units to get medals for and to get MP levels for. Shout out to that one guy who told me he was going for the Bedivere banner just because he's that hard to get and he wants medals. No, he doesn't want medals. He wants NP copies to make sure that he can do, um, he can have his be at maximum power, which I understand and I can respect that. So, something to keep in mind with this one. Um, William Tell is always in every banner, so I don't need to go over him. Of these four, the best one here is, is as Vataman. I'm not sure how much better these get post-buff. I know Rama basically stays the same because he doesn't get a buff and he doesn't even have his wife, so he doesn't have. He really has nothing over here. I'm interested to see if Lakshimbai's um, buff makes her a little bit better at being able to loop because I know she can't loop um, at the moment with Quick because I don't think she has the damage and she has, um, like most servants with Quick, has a little problem with MP gain. But hopefully this should fix her list a little bit, and if not, then I'll have wasted some <laughs> material attempting for it. And Neza is another similar thing where she's a looper, but because she is an old style looper, she was not built with the idea of Coin Sky in mind. So it's kind of hurt her a little bit, but I think the buff will make her just slightly better. But it's definitely a case of just like, these are units you just are kind of happy you have in terms of these three. If you like them, then you like them, and if you want to use them, you want to use them. But they're nothing too stellar. At least with Asvataman, he's also a very good single target archer, plus he's story locked, just like I said with Asclepius over here, a pain in the ass to get more copies of. So if you're if you're a big fan of the Angry Man, this is your chance to get more angry. Alright. Now the five stars, which are gonna be the main thing here. I'm gonna start with the showstopper. So this is the part where after I talk about them, everyone clicks off the video because they heard what they wanted to hear. Arjuna Alter. Arjuna Alter. He is a berserker. One quick, one arts, three busters is what he has. Four hits on quick, uh, two hits on arts, three hits on buster, four hits on extra. Um, his first skill is the anti-evil unique EX. Increases his own attack for three turns. Increases his own damage against enemies with debuffs for three turns except for unremovable debuffs. 30% to attack and the debuff damage is 50% and a cooldown of five. Uh, clairvoyance, transcendental, 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 EX, increases own critical star absorption of buster cards for three turns and then charges on MP gauge, 6,000% Six, <laughs> on buster absorption, 30% on NP and a cooldown of 5. Third skill, the Lamplight of Soul EX, grants off the gut stats for one time three turns and then recovers own HP every turn for three turns. Uh, 2,000 HP is what he revives with, and the, he the healing is 2,000. It's on a cooldown of 7, which is not bad. His two passive skills are Madness Enhancement EX and Divinity EX. His third skill is an anti-archer critical attack chance resistance, because uh, trust no one, not even your archer version. And this is just an increase against uh, critical attack chance against specifically archers. And then his Noble Phantasm is the is the <laughs> I'm about to hit up uh how do you say you're here let me and no he does not say his noble phantasm in this yep he didn't say that so <laughs> it is the Mahapralaya Let's go with that. The revolving sword that adjudicates reoccurring destruction. Rank EX anti-world hits five times. Deals damage to all enemies. Um, 
300% damage at MP level 1. If you get them to MP level 5, it's 500%. It then reduces their buster resistance for 3 turns, activates first. Important to note, 20% uh, at charge level 1. And if you get them all the way to the final charge level, that's 60%. And of course, he has an additional costume here, which is... Where is it? There it is. He has two, technically. One with glasses, wait, my god. One without glasses and one with glasses. This is the student council president, Arjuna. Uh, Arjuna Alter. Um, if you need a motherfucker dead, accept no substitutions when it comes to Arjuna Alter. <laughs> that is all you need to know. At this point, I've said it multiple times throughout the year since he's come out. Arjuna Altar is basically the end-all be-all for a Berserker unit and also a uh, Buster unit. He is absolutely insane. This man cares about one thing, and that's fucking killing you, and that's it. And then the thing he kills stays dead. And if the thing he wants to kill tries to kill him, he has guts, so he gets to stay alive just for a little bit longer. He is absolutely one of the best units in the game. Uh, makes the game insanely easy, is also fucking rad in general when you use him. There's never been, I think this is like one of my favorite design units, because not only is he powerful in his skills, his Noble Phantasm makes it feel like you're already using someone that you shouldn't be using. It is that level of power when it comes to Arjuna Altar. Absolutely love the man. Worth getting 100%, even if you're someone who's like maybe not even built for Buster, I'd still say, hey, if you can find the time to spare a single multi, Spare it and try to see if you can get Arjuna Alter. That is how much I think he's a good ass unit. It's how much everyone thinks he's a good ass unit. In general, having him is worth owning. Uh, and he makes it easier for you in the game because once you have a unit you know for a fact you can beat almost anything with and you can go, oh, I have no problems. I have Arjuna Alter. That opens you up to be able to get whatever unit you want and you don't have to care about anything else. What do I mean by that? I mean that you can then go like, oh, let me look at one of these units. Oh, they're not the strongest, but who cares? I have the strongest. If I ever run into an issue where I can't kill something, I have the thing that kills it, and then I can run something for fun, and then when it's time for when playtime is over, I bring in the big man and he finishes it off. And if you don't care about using fun units, and congratulations, you're already using a fun unit that just kills everything. Arjuna Alter, 100% the man, the dude to get, and it does not surprise me if... Um, people go for him um and that said there's a lot of units kind of like that on here the only thing that i'll say is that um i know in jp and maybe this just comes down to a preference of it kind of depends on what the person is i know i think on jp for a long while they preferred um morgan and i believe the reason was is that morgan actually is more of like a team play kind of thing but in terms of actual power there's just nothing that um compares to Arjuna. I think he's one of the one of the dudes that actually started the trend of like if you're going to make another unit and you want them to be good in that specific class, then you need to make them have something different than Arjuna Alter doesn't have. Like obviously in the team building, your team is 100% focused on making Arjuna Alter as powerful as you want, where something in Morgan is a little bit more about like let's actually spread around and try and get as many people strong as that we can and then go off on a team kind of attack that way. Um, and you can see that's a completely different way to play and that makes it um, it makes it so that Arjuna can continuously always be the strongest while always having other valid options in the game that is available to you. But anyway, that's enough job to talk about just Arjun Alter. I've said, uh, the only thing I should have even said, I shouldn't even looked at his kit. I should have just said, yeah, fucking get him. He's that good. If you're wondering, if you were wondering, hey, is he that good? I can tell you he's that good. I'm not even, I don't even think I'm the greatest person to talk about in the game. And I can tell you that without any doubt in my mind. This man's really good. Next, let's talk about the other units who do not compare to Arjun Alter, but are good them nonetheless. Karna. Because I believe he comes right after. Yes, he does. Karna. Lancer. Um, two quicks. Also made by Paco. One art. Two buster. Three hits on quick. Three hits on arts. One hit on buster. Four hits on extra. His first skill is the knowledge of the deprived A. 500% chance to reduce one enemy's debuff resistance for a single turn. Seals their MP for one turn. On a cooldown of six. Second skill, Mana Burst Flame A. Increases his own buster performance for one turn. Increases his own MP damage for one turn. 30% and 20% on cooldown of 5. 
and his second skill is the Alms Giver's End, which is charges on MP gauge by 30%, increases on critical star generation rate for three turns, increases on critical damage for three turns, and gain crit stars, 100% to star rate, 50% to crit damage, and 40 to crit stars. Um, on a cooldown of 6. A fantastic ass skill. Passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Writing A, and Divinity A. His third skill is an Anti-Rider Attack Damage Aptitude. And his Noble Phantasm is the Vasavi Shakti. O Sun, Abide to Death, Rank EX, Anti-Divine. Hits 5 times, deals damage to all enemies, reduces their buster resistance by 20% for 3 turns. Last for 3, yeah, this is the buff, duh. Uh, damage is 400% at level 1, and if you get it all the way to MP level 5, it's 600%. And then his overcharge effect is dealing extra damage to divinity enemies, 150% at MP 1. And if you get them all the way to the final MP level, it's 200%. And that is Karna. The only thing that really holds back Karna is the fact that this second skill is very old. Karna is a very old unit, so therefore a lot of his buffs are built around the idea of keeping power check in line from when he first originally released and he was like an early year i think he was like the first new year's unit along with arjuna so this ability is very balanced and that means it's now very bad in today's parlance the only thing that i think is good about it is that it has actually a very low cooldown so it is when you're using the double vich and oberon method or the buster looping method then it makes them very uh it makes this skill much better because at least you know you can get this on turn one and you can get this on the third turn but on the middle turn you won't have access to it but this is kind of a sucky when you're in a longer kind of grind fight it means that you have to use it and then just like be like all right i guess i'll wait the five turns um first skill is also very useful when you're in a specific like um battle in um a challenge quest type scenario but this third skill is what actually makes him good. Because originally, if you did not know this, it was 25%. And if you don't know this, the limit of how much starting MP your MP charger has to give you to make you to be able to loop with Koyanskaya, with two Koyanskayas and an Oberon, is that you need to have 30%. He was off by 5%. So when they buffed it, they made it a full 30, which is very good. Um... The crit damage is nice if you're in, again, a, a longer-term fight. It gives them a little bit more, like, all the, all these three here makes it fantastic if you're in a uh, boss battle of some kind. Because you'll get just a one turn. You you save this for when Arjuna has is ready to unleash everything, and you'll have a really good first turn of just, like, smacking the enemy around, especially with the bonus to crit damage. And if you're using a unit that gives bonus crit damage... Like the newly buffed Merlin, obviously we don't have that over here, but when he eventually gets it, when he gives us 310% to Buster crit damage, you'll be pretty damn solid. Big crit time. So yeah, the Karna I think is a really good unit. He's just the only thing that's keeping him, and also the ability to also deal extra damage against the Divine is also very nice, because we have a lot of Divine enemies. Also, this is nice, but the fact that it doesn't apply first kind of is a bummer. But it does give him a little bit more use in a um, challenge quest type scenario. Which you can see here, he was probably originally thought of to be like a challenge quest type of unit. Um, but yeah, I really like Karna. I think he's a really good unit. The only thing I think that's holding him back is that he's just old now. And these two skills, while this first skill I think is useful, you can see that like it's not like the greatest thing in the world, right? It's he doesn't even really do anything like he he himself only applies the single debuff. I think when they they originally made him, he gave no debuff other than the seal your the MP. I guess it's the seal the MP that they gives him as well. I guess at least that will confirm that they get it. I don't know. But a lot of the things I would say that are holding him back is simply just that he's old. Eventually, it will get to the point where they will buff him to the point where he'll be as good as he probably was in the first one but that also doesn't mean that i think he's bad he just ends up being a very good unit and he's also always in every banner so if i don't think you should ever actually go for him unless you're a huge karna fan and huge fan of like maybe collecting all the apocrypha units um but other than that i think he's pretty good to just hold back and wait for unless and unless the day comes where they buff him that much that he would be able to replace something like melusane and even then if they ever did that which would be impossible because why would you ever do that to a unit that is not limited um <laughs> they will release a banner that will let you get them there right then so there's no urgency in trying to get them unless again you were just a huge fan of karna which i don't blame you for being for he's really cool i like karna um also they gave him a new uh animation for when he's with janako 
which I thought was just very cute. It was a random thing to get. I know it probably got a little bit lost in the shuffle of all the things happening currently with the current summer event in JP, but one of the things they added was a little animation for when he's specifically only next to Janako, which I thought was very cute. But anyway, Karna. I think he's a cool unit. I think he's also very good. Next, Janako. The last of them. Oh, yeah. Moon Cancer. <laughs> Great, Janako, also known as Ganesha, or the Great Statue God. One quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Prosperous Business A. Charges party's MP gauge, increases party's attack for three turns, and then gains party critical star regeneration buff for every turn, for three turns. 20% uh, to NP, 20% to attack. Her second skill is Severed Tusk B. 500% chance to draw uh, attention to all enemies to self by 300% for one turn. Reduces zone damage taken by 1,000 for one turn. And then increases zone attack for three turns. 30% on the cooldown of 10. And then her cooldown is 5. Her third skill, which is going to be the upgrade that she gets from her interlude, is the Vin... Vinayaka... Let's go with that. EX grants one ally invincibility for one turn, increases their MP generation rate for one turn, increases their MP damage for three turns, and then increases uh, their damage against enemies with the lawful alignment for three turns. Seal their skills for a single turn. This is a demerit. The MP rate is 30%, the MP damage is 30%, and the damage against the lawful is 50% on a cooldown of five. Um, her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Writing A, Divinity B. Her pen skill for the third skill is an Anti-Lancer Damage Attack. Uh, Anti-Lancer... Uh, Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude. Apologies for that. <laughs> Sorry that you had to hear that. And then finally, her Noble Phantom Phantasm is the Ganesh Impact, which is a very funny that this came out before, I think... No, well, obviously that Janako came out before Genshin Impact. But now I'm wondering on NA, did Genshin Impact come out for her? When the fuck did they release Genshin Impact? Genshin Impact release date. 2020. Okay, 2020. Yeah, probably for NA, that, that, that about lines up. I think she was released for, um... Well, I can look down here, actually. I should have her banner. Never mind, apparently nobody cares enough about Janako to put down her banners. Nice to know. Nice to learn. This is where I learn. This is where I learned that. Anyway. Reduces it's an arts, hits three times, rank C. Reduces all enemies' defense by 30% for three turns, activates first. Deals damage to all enemies and then grants self invincibility for one turn. Uh, 450% damage at MP level 1, and if you get her to MP level 5, it's 750%. Recovers on HP, uh, 2000 heal, and overcharge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final overcharge, it's 600%. And that is Jinako. Uh, Jinako, I think, is actually a pretty solid looking unit. Um, I would be curious to see if this buff here, which would give her just a little bit more damage at MP rate, is enough to make her maybe a little bit better at looping. Um, probably. It would make sense if it did. But in terms of generic support, it's not bad generic support. Like, when you look at it, it's 20% MP to the party, some attack, while also providing, like, taunt, which can be very nice. And not only is her taunt, um... Not only does she have taunt for that single turn, she'll also reduce damage taken, she'll even increase her own attack, and if for whatever reason you're that afraid of her dying, she can give herself invincibility and then also recover her own HP, and then while also reducing the enemy's uh, defense, I think that makes her a pretty solid unit. The one thing that probably holds her back is the fact that she's Moon Cancer, and Moon Cancers can sometimes have a little bit of a hard time when it comes to doing damage, mainly because... They don't really have that many units that they have a bonus against. It's exactly one, and I want to say it is Avengers. Um, and you, when are you ever going to run into a full party of like three Avengers that is not related to a <laughs> um, ordeal call, which are coming in the future? It's not going to happen very often. Um, so yeah, I think Janako is a neat unit, and I think that it's probably okay to not go for her. Why? Well, first of all, if you plan to summon for BB upcoming, uh, or any of the units related to Ordeal Call 3, they all are Moon Cancer. So is Janako. There's a conflict of interest in there, but then there's another thing. There's Because she's not limited, you're just as likely to get Janako instead of the featured unit that you want. And before you say, what are the chances of that? 
I saw a lot of Japanese players a little bit salty that they got Janako when they were going for another Moon Cancer at the time. If I remember right, let me see who is the Moon Cancer up that's up right now. I believe it is Seal. Seal is the current Moon Cancer that is up right now. That is correct. So they were going for Seal. They saw the little thing pop up and instead it was Janako. So I think you're probably okay to wait to summon on her if you plan to summon in the upcoming summer event. Mainly because I don't think you have that much uses for like multiple moon cancers. At least not yet from what the game has shown me. And maybe they'll change something and do something different. And maybe there's something I'm missing from Janako even though she already sounds like a pretty good support. At least she'll always have that. She's pretty different from the other moon cancers. Because a lot of the other moon cancers, while well, she also focuses on attacking, she also provides like a lot of like team buffs and stuff like that. Um, she's probably an okay unit to not have to summon for. Similar to Karna, it's my same feeling with any unit that's not limited. Uh, I think you should only summon for them if you're a big fan of them, and then you're okay to like pass them up any other time, just because there's always a chance for them to randomly appear for you. Which is how I got my Janako and how I got I how I got my Karna. They just randomly showed up because when you do enough summons over the years. A lot of these old 5 stars, even though it seems like, ah, oh, I'm never going to get them, there's always a chance for you to randomly get them. There's never going to be a chance for you to get Arjuna Altar. Um, and that, and, and if you've seen the video that I most recently released where I talked about all the units that are, like, upcoming, you know for a fact that there's a lot of powerhouses coming this year. I think it's probably better for you to... wait and get one of those. Like, obviously, like, it's hard for me to be like, oh yeah, Janako, really, like, nice support, but she's also not Castoria. So I would say, like, you should probably wait for Castoria if you wanted a support unit, and then maybe while you're going for Castoria, maybe Janako will randomly spook you, and you'll be angry, but eventually, if you end up getting Castoria and the anger subsides, you'll be like, oh, you know what? I got two SSRs. That's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. But anyway, that's how I feel about it. Uh, if you have a specific idea about it, or like a, not an idea, what's the right word? If you have like an opposite feeling about that, feel free to tell me. I've always wondered how other people treat not limited SSRs. I understand that they are just as hard to get as a limited one, but I always treat it as, as long as I have a chance to get them in the banner, I don't feel right actually summoning for them, even if they are units I really like. The only exception I'll make is when it's an event going on, and I want the event CEs, which is how I justified summon for, just summoning for Tygon Wong when I got him. But anyway, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. That's Lost Belt. That's the Road to 7 Lost Belt number 4 campaign. Best of luck to you if you summon for Arjuna Altar, and the best of luck to you if you decide to go for Karna or Janago. Shine on, Crazy Diamond. Shine on. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. You know what? I think I'll put what I said about Paco right here just as a bonus thing at the end. That makes more sense than ruining the flow <laughs> when I said it. So go ahead, Wokey, from way earlier in the video. Feel free to say what you had to say with the previous. All right, peace. He is made by Paco. How important is Arjuna Altar? I'm willing to bring up Paco. Uh, not to say there's anything bad about it. Paco is awesome. I love every... I think I actually love every single servant that Paco has made. Let me see. Love. Love. Lo uh, I eventually learned to love. The monkey helped a lot with Arjuna. Angry Man, love the Angry Man. Nobukatsu, I love my boy Nobukatsu. Karna's good. Uh, Ryoma's also really cool. Ryoma and his wife, very cool. Um, I don't know enough about him because we haven't seen him yet. Uh, I wonder if they someone actually brought this up. Do you think that they would ever actually do an Oryu Summer? Because... The only way to actually get her is that she needs to be tied to Ryoma, so would that mean that she's just never going to get a swimsuit? I never actually thought about it until most recently, but I was like, huh, yeah, I don't know what they would do. Would that mean that they would be a case of they would actually have to make a legit her standalone? Or would they f make um, give them the Lancer male version a costume to make it work? I don't know. It'd be interesting to think about. It's not like they're opposed to it. They give uh, free welfare summers every year, but it'd be interesting to think about. Thomas Edison, I like Edison. Uh, Cha Cha's cool. Oh, Nobunaga Berserker's cool. I don't know anything about him. Yeah, so point is, like every single one of these, I just wasted your time a little bit.